Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at some different examples of radioactive decay and how this can lead to the process of transmutation where one element is basically turning into a different element. So the first examples that we'll look at are both examples of beta decay. We'll be looking at beta minus decay, which is also called the electron emission decay. We'll also be looking at beta positive decay, which is positron emission. So first let's consider the example of beta minus decay. An example of this is what happens to atoms of carbon-14. Now, the nuclei of carbon-14 atoms are unstable. They're going to undergo the decay process in order to produce a more stable nucleus. So let's take a look at the things that are going to be produced. One thing that's going to be given off is an electron. And I'm just going to write E- minus to show that. Another thing that's going to be given off is something called an electron antineutrino. So I'm going to write that right over here. Okay, so that's our symbol for the electron antineutrino. The final thing is to figure out, well, what is the transmutation? What's the other element that's being produced? As this electron emission is occurring, this is coming from the nucleus, it's actually going to convert a neutron to become a proton. So let's consider the carbon-14 nucleus. It consists of six protons. That's from the atomic number six right here. It also contains eight neutrons. And this is um, what gives us that total mass of 14. So by looking at the periodic table, we can see that the neighboring element to carbon is nitrogen. As this emission process occurs, again, one of the neutrons actually becomes a proton. Now, this isn't really going to change the mass. The overall mass of this particle that's being produced is still 14. But because we have had a neutron become converted into a proton, the atomic number is now going to be 7. So this process is going to produce nitrogen 14. Now, the reason why this is occurring is to produce a more stable nucleus. And this nucleus, with a perfect one-to-one -one ratio of protons to neutrons, 7 to 7, is going to be more stable than the carbon-14 nucleus, which had six protons paired up with eight neutrons. So that, again, is an example of beta minus decay. Our next example, we're going to look at beta positive decay, or positron emission. In this one, it's going to look similar, but there are some key differences. First, we're going to produce an E plus particle. This is a positron particle. And we're all going to produce an electron neutrino. Now, the other thing that we need to figure out is what is going to be produced here. This is basically the opposite of beta minus decay. So here, instead of increasing the atomic number by 1, we're going to decrease the atomic number by 1. So instead of 12, we're going to get 11. The mass number is not going to change. That's still going to be 23. That's consistent with both types of beta decay. The final thing left to do is to figure out, well, which element is being produced. All we need to do is look at the periodic table, and we see that element 11 is sodium. So this is the element produced by this process. So it'll produce sodium 23. Our final decay process, sorry, excuse me, is the process of alpha decay. Alpha decay is going to be responsible for producing alpha particles. We use this symbol for alpha. And an alpha particle is really a helium atom with two protons, two neutrons, with the electrons removed so that it has a positive charge. So let's look at that process for uh, the alpha decay of this element right here. Now, we know that an alpha particle is going to be produced, so I'm going to go ahead and write that in first. Now, how do I figure out the other element which is going to be produced by this process? It's really just a matter of simple subtraction. I know that I have an atomic number here of 2. Here my atomic number was 95. So I'm going to be producing an element with an atomic number of 93. The mass number here was 241. I'm going to subtract the 4 from that. So I'm going to find 237. The only thing left to do is to reference my periodic table. I had to get my periodic table. So what we need to do is look up element 93 on the periodic table. And I can see that that's down here in the bottom row. And that matches up with neptunium. So this is my 
element that's being produced by the alpha decay of americium.